Gallup says Ghana is ranked third with most perceived corrupt country among 129 others with free press. The Gallup poll is the latest corruption index released by Gallup, with Ghana scoring 89% behind the Czech Republic and Lithuania. The report comes on the back of a series of investigative reports pointing to corruption in various sectors. The latest Gallup poll was conducted between April and May 2012 on perception of countries with free and limited press around the world. Ghana was recognized among the countries with free press. Gallup Incorporated is primarily a research-based global performance management consultant company. My name is Brian and I'm welcome to today's big story. And the report shows that the majority of people in the 108 out of 129 countries which were surveyed in April and May view corruption as widespread in their government. Among countries with a free press, the percentage of adults who say corruption is widespread in their government reaches as high as 94% in the Czech Republic and as low as 14% in Sweden. The media playing a great role in the fight against corruption and this will be the focus for uh, the show tonight. The rest will be speaking to uh, uh, the head of communications of the department of the Central University College, uh, Dr. Mesan Maube, and will be telling us exactly how uh, the media has been very helpful in the fight against uh, corruption. So let me first of all try and speak to the executive director of the uh, the Deputy Executive Director of the Media Foundation for West Africa, uh, Suleiman Braima, on the line. Now, thank you so much, sir, for joining us on today's big story. Thank you very much, Brian. Now, first of all, uh, let's watch this. Now, the poll says that uh, uh, Ghana's media has been very helpful in uh, uh, revealing certain corrupt practices. Is that how you also describe the Ghanaian media? Well, um, I think that um, it wouldn't be far from right to describe the Ghanaian media as such. Of course, um, that is premised on the fact that we have a very liberalized media environment and, and free expression is thriving. And of course, in recent times, if you monitor the media, the kinds of expo exposures that are coming, talk about Jida, talk about Suba, talk about, you know, all the other kinds of uh, inappropriate views have, that have been exposed by the media, uh, it definitely means that the media is doing and playing its watchdog role quite effectively. Mm. Uh, and the fact that uh, we're doing well, do you think the effort at uh, uh, reducing corruption is making strides? Come again, right. I'm asking that you think that the media is doing well. I'm therefore asking the fight against uh, corruption is it really scoring points? Well, um, I think that the media is doing its part uh, by way of exposing corruption, playing its watchdog role, uh, tracking government uh, spending and all of that. But in terms of the fight against corruption, really, it is the responsibility of the people at the top, if I may put it that way. And uh, this about government. And I think that uh, my personal view is that there hasn't been any... Uh, anything to convince me that government is indeed committed to the fight against corruption. I'm yet to come across any uh, action or any policy that convinces me that government is indeed um, fighting corruption in this country. Uh, do, you, do you also see the media uh, being given that supportive hand, the media getting that role in, in the fight, in its fight against uh, revealing corrupt practices in society? Well, in terms of support, right, I don't know uh, exactly what kind of support you are referring to, but the fact that um, there is a free media environment, mm. uh, free, free expression is thriving, and therefore journalists who report these corrupt practices and corrupt deals 
are not picked up by state security apparatus or state security officials, that ex I, I would say that the necessary environment that should make the media play its role or their role effectively mm. um, has been created. Elsewhere within the region and in Africa, um, a, a reportage in the media, regardless of whether it is true or not, would result in uh, a police action. Currently in Sierra Leone, two journalists you know, from a newspaper called The Independent uh, have been placed in detention for the past 13 days. And right. They refused to you know, uh, because they thought that the president, they reported a story that the president was, you know, uh, not in good relationship with, with his wife and mm. that his actions are inappropriate. And that, and, I mean, ended them, uh, have led them in police detention for the past 13 days. Mm. So the environment here in Ghana is obviously supportive. The, uh, what do you see? One of the, the challenges of media, if you speak to media, uh, practitioners will tell you that the right information bill perhaps is what they're waiting for to be able to get that free hand uh, to uh, uh, go about your duties. This is delaying. Do, don't you see this as perhaps uh, placing obstacles in the way of the media? Yes, clearly. As I, as I, as I said, um, I have, I am yet to be convinced that this is the indeed committed to the fact corruption. Because mm. for me, um, Access to information among citizens and, of course, also the media uh, is one of the key um, elements, you know, in the fight against corruption. And I just had to Sierra Leone. Significantly, Sierra Leone um, um, just last yesterday also passed I mean, a, a, a new access to information legislation. Mm. So, for a country that is, you know, seems to be intolerant of their freedom, and yet you know, has been something that is supposed to give citizens access to information. Access to information, obviously, is not just about access to information for the media, but also for, for citizens. And in that case, the, the fight against corruption becomes broad-based. Right. And, and that is why I, I have the conviction that, or I some of the view that government is yet to really demonstrate its commitment to the fight against corruption. Uh, and uh, if you look at civil society, if a government of the day is unable, or we're not seeing that uh, a desire to fight corruption, do you see civil society uh, w within uh, limits, or let me put it this way, civil society applying the necessary pressure uh, to put government in a way to fight corruption? Well, um, from the civil society front, I think that um, I would say that something has been done, but it's not, it has not been as effective as one would expect. So far, the mainstream anti-corruption bodies like GII, Ghana Anti-Corruption Coalition, have obviously sometimes been at the forefront of, of these issues. And mm. I think that the fight against corruption, mounting pressure on the duty bearers to act in the way they should, demand some broad based you know, uh, actions. And therefore, uh, I think in terms of civil society in Ghana, um, we are yet to get to the point where we would say, indeed, civil society is as mobilized uh, to, to contribute in putting pressure on government to do the right. You, you, you mentioned the issue of some other African countries where the media is going through uh, terrible uh, uh, um, situations in its uh, uh, ways of ensuring that corruption is reduced. Now, do you see the Ghanaian media perhaps uh, getting into this particular uh, uh, a, a, a way of uh, being uh, some blocks being put in its way in its uh, struggle to uh, reveal corrupt practices? Because we hear, for instance, uh, Kolebu chief executive saying that, uh, well, the media should not target Kolebu because corruption is everywhere in the world. Well, um, I think that is his view, and I, I wonder if he said that uh, to mean that, well, corruption is right, because it's everywhere in the world, and therefore when it is happening here, we shouldn't think that it is wrong. Mm -hmm. I, I would doubt if that is what um, he meant by that. And, and that also in any, does not in any way um, prevent the media from doing the work that it's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. The media should continue to put out whatever is happening in the public domain, uh, of course, I doubt if there is any government that would want its uh, name to be put out there in that light and consistently being revealed as not doing the right thing. I doubt if that is what our government wants. And therefore, definitely the media's um, contribution in exposing these developments would help the government at some point in time to sit up and then act in a way that it should.
Well, let me say thank you to you. Uh, Suleiman Ibrahim is a deputy executive director of Media Foundation for West Africa. Talking to me there on the, the Gallup poll that has just been released. Ghana ranked third most uh, uh, perceived country with corruption, uh, with free press. And we're trying hard to also speak to Dr. Mesan Malbe, the head of communications of uh, the Central University uh, College. He heads the Department of Communications there. He will be joining us very soon or on phone to discuss this particular poll that has been released. Uh, that says that Ghana is ranked the third most perceived country with corrupt practices uh, with a free press. And also don't forget that we also be trying to reach uh, the business community. How is this poll going to impact particularly on investment into the country, especially uh, with our foreign direct investment? Uh, and uh, we're taking a short break. When we come back, uh, we'll continue with this very discussion on corruption. So you welcome back to today's big story and we're trying hard to speak to the head of the communications department of the Central University College, Dr. Uh, Messan Magwe. But let me speak to uh, Sami Ampa, he's the head of Reset Gold Coast Securities via Skype. But let's look at exactly what this uh, poll that says Ghana is ranked third most corrupt country. Uh, perception, of course, it's a perception uh, out of 129 when it comes to countries with free press and see how it will impact on investment. Now, Sami, thanks so much for your time once again. Well, Sami, if you can hear me uh, quickly, uh, uh, tell me now, in terms of investment, well, I've just lost uh, uh, Sami Ampa, head of research of Gold Coast Securities uh, Limited, uh, trying hard to reach him. We'll try to look at exactly what this poll means for uh, investment in the country and what uh, Ghana uh, can do to ensure that perhaps we continue to uh, get that. Uh, Sami is back online now. Uh, Sami, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, right. Uh, so you tell me now, uh, this is a poll uh, uh, put together by Gallup and says that Ghana is ranked the third most corrupt uh, uh, perception country uh, with a free press. And exactly by way of investment, attracting investment, such a poll, what does it do to our, our ability to attract investment? Well, I've lost uh, uh, Samuel Ampa uh, again. Uh, we have uh, difficulty uh, trying to uh, reach him uh, via um, uh, Skype. But uh, Samuel Ampa is head of research, Gold School Securities. Uh, the uh, Ghana poll is saying that Ghana is ranked the third most uh, 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 corruption perceived country. Uh, 129 countries were surveyed, and we came third behind the Czech Republic and Lithuania and uh, exactly we scored about 89 uh, percentage points and that is uh, what we're trying to look at trying to find out exactly what it means by way of attracting investment now uh, Samuel you're back but uh, can you hear me yes I'm back right, right. and so uh, tell us uh, well I still have difficulty again uh, uh, we're trying to reach uh, uh, Samuel on uh, line uh, we have difficulty uh, getting through to uh, his Skype, but uh, we'll still try hard to get it. But 
The poll says the Ghana is uh, uh, placed third behind the Czech Republic and Lithuania. We scored 89% uh, uh, countries with free press, but where corruption is perceived as very, very uh, worrying. And uh, we've spoken to uh, the Deputy Executive Director of the Media Foundation for West Africa, trying to look at how the media has been at the forefront of the fight against corruption and if the media has done a, a lot of work. I'm still trying hard to reach uh, uh, Samuel Amper, head of research, Gold Coast Securities. He's back again via uh, Skype. Uh, Samuel, once again, if you can hear me, uh, how do you see this impacting on investment into the country? Well, um, I, I really did not hear your question very well, but if you ask my impressions on, on this um, report... Exactly. Basically... And, and its impact on investments into the country. Well, um, let me say that this currently would... I, I do not see how um, this report will directly affect um, our invest and foreign investments in this country. I mean, in the... A lot of reports really um, saying Ghana is very corrupt. But um, if you look at in the year 2011, if you look at the report by the um, Ghana Investment Promotion Council, for example, mm. we recorded an inflow of uh, foreign direct investment of close to over um, 6.8 billion um, Ghana cities. And then in, in 2012, we also recorded about 4.8 um, 9 billion Ghana cities. So, so I mean, these were, were significant figures that were recorded by the Ghana Investment Promotion Council. Mm. And therefore, in that period as well, I mean, we recall the integrity um, reports that came in as Ghana was very corrupt and, you know, mentioned some few sectors that were highly um, affected with that um, statement of corruption. So I really do not see that this might um, affected. There's currently no empirical evidence to show right. that um, the state of corruption um, that we've been you know, labeled against affects investments. Mm. And, and of course, invest, investors who want to uh, put their money where they can trust the people, you also would argue that uh, despite all these polls and, and the, the corruption perception uh, being bandied around, uh, we might escape uh, investors running away from us? I really did not get your question, Brian. I'm, I'm asking that, of course, if I am a businessman and I'm putting my money in, in a particular uh, venture, uh, the, the trust of the people I'm dealing with as to their integrity is quite important. You still would argue that this will not have any impact on uh, perhaps the kind of business uh, relations we have with the rest of the world. Well, um... I am surprised the, the, the sudden upspring of some organizations calling themselves credible enough um, for us to take into consideration their reports. Mm. Um, I, I really do not know about this organization until I heard about them today. Um, perhaps they have been in existence for quite some time, but I do not know how um, their reports could readily affect investment confidence in, in our economy. Mm. Um, we believe that uh, as an economy, I mean, we are well endowed with a lot of resources. Yes, um, let me say this way, that um, when we take corruption, I mean, it's a big issue and every investor will look at it um, as, as it as it being reported. Right. Um, because um, if you look at corruption, for example, in, in our country, it is being seen as, you know, um, cost, um, an additional cost for every investor, mm. every investor who comes in to do business will have to go some go some bureaucratic process in terms of you know um, paying some money um, to get licenses, um, you know um, paying money to get permissions and all that. I mean, the cost of business in this country then becomes very expensive. But mm. uh, honestly speaking, this organization, as we speak of, is one organization that I, I believe that much emphasis on its credibility. Is, is quite questionable, and that um, I, I do not really want to, you know, to to, to give them um, some sort of, um, 
you know, space mm. in, in, our, in, our, in our, our general economic dispensation now. Mm. And uh, as, as we, uh, let's wrap up the discussion. You, you think that uh, the uh, Gallup, uh, the poll might not be that credible. But uh, just within our own country, we have uh, the corruption perception being quite high. Can we, in a way, uh, find out how this can be reduced? Quickly, let's wrap up. Yes, I mean, seriously, no economy would want to be tagged very corrupt. Mm. Um, it, the onus now lies on us as a country to look at how best we can get away this canker uh, of corruption. I mean, it is, it is affecting our institutions. Our institutions are being tagged very corrupt. I mean, anybody that comes into the country currently who wants to do business in this country will have to, you know, really face this institutional corruption that is really eating us up. And it is not good. I mm. believe that, I mean, this report should also send a signal to government that really you are being tagged as corrupt, even on international forum. Right. So you either you do something about it or get on with that issue and then get a lot of bashing from international um, or multi-donor support. Because mm. you know that uh, we have really battling with an issue with our donor support where they think that this country might be going a way that is not really economically viable. So we have an issue, and I believe that we should not encourage this country, but we should work we to at, fix you it. know, solving the tag of corruption around us. Well, thanks so much for speaking to me. Sami Ampa is a head of research, Gold Coast Securities. They're talking to me about uh, uh, corruption. I tried earlier to speak to our head of the communications department of the Central University College, Dr. Messan Maube. And, um, uh, he's got to drop his line. But uh, we'll try and reach him and quickly uh, pick a word or two as we get ready to wrap up. Now, uh, uh, Dr. Maugbe, if you're back on the line, thanks so much for uh, staying there uh, for us. But first of all, uh, let's look at uh, perhaps you have done a lot of uh, media studies in the sub-region Ghana as well. In, in terms of the fight against corruption, what exactly are the challenges that the media faces. Well, we've lost uh, Dr. Uh, Messan Maugwe there. He's the head of uh, communications department of the Central University College. They'll be trying hard to uh, pick uh, their thought on this particular issue, a Gallup poll that has placed Ghana as the third most uh, corrupt perceived country behind the Czech Republic and Lithuania. And of course, uh, the issue is that uh, corruption is being reported by the media, a lot of it reported by the media across the country. And we'll be getting you more on this particular issue. Now, but this is only the first part of our show. We have more coming up. Uh, when we return, we'll do an interactive with the Lady Marian. Stay right there. We're coming back in a moment. Welcome back to the second segment where we're talking more about uh, interactive, getting interactive. And of course, we'll be discussing a very important issue that I'm sure a lot more of you will be interested in. The black stars will have to face Egypt. And I guess uh, you might be privy to what is happening there. We need to go to Egypt according to FIFA, whether mm -hmm. we like it or not, we have to go. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure that is what is trending the whole day. It's been in the news. It's been in the news. Mm. Everybody's talking about it. Mm. Uh, how safe are we? Mm. And actually calls, you know, uh, authorities mm. also a little bit of questions about them. That do they actually care about us? Do they mm. go all out to fight for us? Or just because uh, the Egyptians say, okay, we have security, so mm. let's go. Mm. They're, mm. they're worrying, but apparently things have calmed down, so we can come. Mm. I'm wondering how many Ghanaian fans will want to be in Egypt. Can you imagine? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, welcome to the show once again. Thank you so much. <laughs> welcome to JN Interactive. My name is Marian Touré. <laughs> So welcome to JN Interactive. Within today's big story, we are talking about uh, football and security around football. Egypt, you know, is hosting Ghana now for, you know, our March this November, November 19th to be precise. We are supposed to go there to play our second leg. We thrashed them when they came home. Is anything going to change when we get there? Apparently, um, an airbase has been reserved for the March 30,000 seater capacity and we have to go whether we like it or not because that's what uh, FIFA and CAF jointly are saying so the FA has nothing to say about that but if you're joining us now I like to announce all the social media tools you need to get in touch with the show because after all the show is nothing without you and your comments we are on facebook.com slash join news on TV we tweet at join news on TV and uh, you can use the hashtag JN interactive GH when you're sending us uh, all your tweets so that we can be able to take them all at once I am on Twitter by the way and I also tweet at MN to rain if you are sending us an email please use join news I am at multi TV world.com and our whatsapp number is 0260-518-801 so this is where tech meets news to set the agenda and of course whatever you're talking about in cyberspace we are talking about it here on this half hour platform which we have given you to amplify your voice so the Ghana Football Association has expressed concern at the security situation in Egypt and has urged the world football's governing body to, as they say, find a safe and secure venue for the November 19th return leg. But FIFA confirmed Cairo as the venue for the second leg match and they are saying that this decision was based on guarantees received from the government of Egypt and CAF's decision to allow al Ahi to play their Champions League March in Cairo and uh, Ghana's leading envoy to Egypt, Al Haji Sinari, you know, confirmed that and he says that his team has begun the process of ensuring both players and supporters are safe for the November 19th encounter. Adding, he is confident that the game will be very, very independent and free, judging from the improved security situation in Cairo. But uh, Egypt has reserved. 80,000 seater capacity air defense stadium in Cairo for the second leg match against Ghana. So we are all gunning to go to Egypt and then support the Black Stars. You have been talking to us. After all, the show is all about you. And we have been asking what you make of all of these, these new developments. At least we were hoping that the venue would be changed and then the Egyptians will have to come back to Ghana for the second leg so we can thrash them again. But... You know, as it, it, it now stands, we have to go to Egypt. We have already thrashed them 6 1. What do you think about all of this? Let's take our first video blog. I'm a bit scared of the Egyptians. So if they were able to play away in Egypt, I would, li I would love that. The authorities of Egypt will not look, uh, like to mess up their chance. I mean, they know that if they mess up, they will not be given the opportunity to, you know, be in the uh, African Cup or these qualifiers again. So definitely, they are going to do everything possible to make sure that uh, Ghanaians are secured. Since the security is there, we are safe. I think the whole world is looking at what is going on. So we will, we will just we the supporters. We are also at the back for, to pray for Ghana so that. Uh, they will score everything will go all right. Ghana going to Egypt is not any mercy because I think the securities are going to be tight and I don't think there will be fight or something or any bombing. Because while it's under FIFA, that means the whole place is going to be well secured. I think we are safe. This 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 afternoon, the Egyptian embassy, these the people, they say the, the security is tight. They will make sure they will provide enough security for us. So the supporters should know say maybe they are afraid of the hungo.
So you're very, very optimistic that nothing is going to happen. Of course, it's, it's all about, it's a match after all, and it's, it's, it's going to be done peacefully. So we, we have no, you know, trepidations at all. We know that the Black Stars will go and they will do the do and deliver and take us to World Cup 2014. After all, I've been gunning for them since this uh, started and uh, my bikini is ready to go to Brazil. And so we are going to go to Brazil. I take some of your comments that have been coming through on Facebook and uh, the precursor is already there on Facebook right now. If you can see the FA has expressed concern, yet we are going to go there anyway. So the question was that, do you think the venue will have any effect on the confidence and morale of the Black Stars, which could invariably affect our chances of qualifying for Brazil 2014? That was the question. And um, 32 comments have arrived so far. Fantastic. I love you guys that you get in touch every time, you know, we post something, you are there to comment. Neverson Bailey says, yes, but not that much because the 6-1 will help boost the morale of the boys more. Fantastic. Johnson Wilson says, not at all. If we play in Pakistan, we are going to win. Um... Prince uh, Salasi says, nothing can stop us in Jesus' name. We are beating them in their own backyard. And I love that. I really love that. Uh, John says, yes, of course. Nicholas um, Boama says, the venue will not help at all. Wow, that's what you're thinking. But, I mean, 6 to 1. We've thrashed them already. What more can we do? We just have to go and kick the ball around a few times, prevent them from scoring. We can still come back home. I still be on point, right? So don't be afraid. Let's just pray and I hope that uh, Chrissy Apaya and his boys will do the do on the day for us. Baba Musa Tamale says, Inshallah, Ghana will beat Egypt convincingly come 19th, November 2013. Ghana Black Stars cannot afford um, not to appear in next year's FIFA World Cup in Brazil. It will be a complete indictment on the Egyptian security if they fail to provide adequate security for the safety of the players and the supporters, uh, spectators before, during and immediately after the match ends. Inshallah, God is in total control. No evil force shall prosper against Ghana Blasters. And yes, Inshallah to that also. Christian Salvo, well, my good sister, I think that we should focus on the match and leave the security issues for the national security to deal with it. I like that. Very, very much so. Let's go out there. Let's plan our game. However we're playing, whatever the formation is, go there with your A game face on, A game, you know, legs on the pitch. Get it going and let's win. Forget about the security and let security take care of itself. I like that. Um, Emmanuel Sin says uh, GFA should boycott the game. After all, we have qualified already. What if we do and then they tell us that, okay, the match that we have already played, they are going to cancel it. What then do we do? We I don't think we can do that, can we? In fact, I should ask somebody. If we can't, then perhaps we should all fall sick. The team should fall sick. You know, go and get some sick leave and then we'll all fall sick on that day. No, I'm not saying we should do that, but it's a funny twist to that. Evan says, it will not. I prefer Black Stars to play in Cairo. Okay, so when we go there and then we thrash them, at least they will see that it's not, about, it's not just about the home uh, crowd, but we actually thrash them because we were the best on both occasions. I get that. Uh, Junior says... Um, whether bulletproof or not, black stars all the way, I don't think the Egyptians will do anything to jeopardize the security in the stadium. Bear in mind, they have, uh, you know, one and six deficit to over ten. That's their agenda. And, of course, it is actually their agenda. And so we'll go and take our next video blog. And it's just asking whether you would think that uh, the venue would influence the match in any way, shape or form. But bear in mind that we've already, already thrashed them 6-1. Let's go take our next video blog. Because, you know, if you meet an opponent, whether it's in your home or away, okay, the performance they put up here show that they don't really have edge over uh, black stars, okay. Scoring them, I think, 6 was too much. It really tells that Ghanaians are, you know, so powerful to the extent that they cannot uh, beat us. So, if they scored in their home support and everything, I think they, they can score one, but they, they can't score as more than one, and that one will not help them.
So that is what you're thinking. We've also uh, been asking if there are any security concerns at all because we're going there, you know, we're playing away, you know, in their home and we're playing away from home. It's, it's something else. But uh, you've been talking to us about it. So we'll take our last video blog and I'll come and take some more of your comments. <laughs> Believe me, you, most of Black Stars players are professionals. They've heard this thing several times. They are playing outside, they hear these things, okay? So I don't think it is going to scare them. I know definitely they will, they will, they will win. We are going to have a narrow win, probably 2 1 or 1 0. I'm sure we'll score them. We'll score them more than what we we'll, we'll score here. There's no way Egypt is going to win, but maybe I don't know the way the players are going. Maybe they'll be highly tempered in terms of they'll be expecting some. That's where it's going to crash their brain so that they can't concentrate. But other than that, I think everything will work out very well. There's no way the Egyptian is going to score us. Even we have scored them here 6 1. We can go there and win them again. I don't think so. These boys is matured. I don't think they are afraid of anything. And I like that spirit in all of uh, the people who spoke in our video blog. I uh, will go and take some more of your comments. Uh, Roland Yeboah Fine Boy says, yes, since they have some fear in them, now until the march is over, they will still fear for their lives. And we must note that, that life is very precious. And also that um, this is the second chance. There's no second chance after death, but since there is an assurance, then they, sh they should feel free and play their game that day. Christian Salvo, let's all pray and ask favor from God because this battle is uh, of the Lord's. Um, Umar says no, and we will beat them again if we play it in, in the pyramids. <laughs> Hi to my mom in what? My mom, Portia. Oh, oh okay. Wow. Uh, and Portia. I mean, well, that, that nice to, to give shout outs whilst you're sending your comments, right? Uh, Bansa says, no matter uh, what we are winning, they must learn to do away with war. Richie says, Egypt can never qualify irrespective of the venue. Jacob K. Sam, if Cairo is not secure, there are other cities like Alexandria or any other secure place outside Egypt. And I agree with you, but... Uh, what they're saying is that if the Al Ahi Champions League match would come on there, then uh, there's no reason why Ghana cannot play Egypt there. So let's keep our fingers crossed and see what will happen from here in on. At least we have about three weeks to go. So within three weeks, I'm sure anything can change. But if security is, is okay and it's beefed up, then why not? I mean, let's go and then get them. Wisdom says Ghana can decide not to play. It's only three goals with three points. Aite Derek says, Cairo or China, we are going to win. And I have my passports ready. Let's go Ghana. Passports. Mm. Speaking of which, how many do you have? And uh, why do you have more than one? <laughs> Just a funny side of it. Uh, Sar uh, Sari Chumesi says, yes, because uh, they will not have... Uh, they will not be comfortable to play there. Mutala Gomda says, we shall go to their backyard and beat them there upon the instability region there. By the way, FIFA should make sure they sanction Egypt. Should anything on tour would happen, happen before during and after the game Ghana Black Stars shall make it to Brazil at all cost um, Cyril says security first Roland says no weapon formed against us shall prosper and every every tongue <laughs> what theater rise against us ah I, I don't know any tongue that shall rise against us on that day of the match I nullify it uh, to go something go black stars and don't fear for other people also died for the independence of our country so you also should be ready to die for the country <laughs> are you serious <laughs> are you serious this is a game we are all out there to go and have fun and win some points die playing a game i don't think so that that one is, is very very serious independence is a different thing and going to have uh, fun on the pitch and then take ghana to the world cup is also a different ball game altogether so i don't think the black stars no none of them will be willing to go and die like that max billion says uh, by the name of the Lord, they will go and win and come back peacefully. I like that. Nana said, you see safe and secure. Tanko Musa says, um, 
No, we will make uh, it even if we play in the middle of the war, <laughs> inshallah. Roland, again, well, I ask you, Roland, you've had so many chances today. Alex says, GFA should rather focus on the match because no matter the condition in Cairo, Egypt cannot eliminate Ghana. Gilbert Asylum says, I know that uh, the God will be a Ghanaian, so no cause for any alarm. I'll take my last comment. Amin Wahab says, the Black Stars will will surely lose if uh, they go to Egypt with a perception of being secure uh, and afraid to die. We should encourage them to think positive on how to win the game. And that is where we wrap up on the comments for today. Bright joins me so we can wrap up. And I'm sure everyone thinks the Black Stars will win that particular match. Um, we are very, very confident. After 6-1, uh, well... I think only God can stop us. Only God can stop us. <laughs> and I know God will stop me from wearing my bikini on that day. We are going to bring that. Well, thank you so much for having us here for one hour. We're back uh, same time tomorrow. But here next to is coming up right after this show. My name is Bright. And I'm full. And I am Marianne Touré. Have a good evening. Good evening. <laughs>